Good morning guys, Mr. Ralph here again. Today I will show you how to make a Celtic Knot Rosette. Let's get right into it. So we already learned how to do a Celtic Knot border. There's the example. Uh, but how about a Celtic Knot Rosette? Well, a rosette is a square or circular design that's meant to go in the middle of something or on the corner of something. Uh, and so I will show you how to make a simple square rosette today. Uh, you will need a ruler and of course pencil and paper. Uh, just like with our Celtic knot border, uh, we need to establish some guidelines. Uh, and for a square rosette, I will establish a square. So how to draw a square accurately. With a ruler, uh, I am going to make this square about four inches by four inches. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to establish the bottom line. So giving myself enough space so that my design doesn't go off the paper, I will draw a four inch long line. So that's exactly four inches long. Okay. From the end of the ruler to the line where it says four inches or in reverse like I did. And I've got a nice straight four inch long line. Now, um, if your ruler is like mine and you have a perfectly straight cut flat end and a very pointy right angle, this will help you draw the next line because we need to have these lines be at right angles to one another because the definition of a square is a quadrilateral with right angles at four corners and all the sides are the same length. And that is exactly what we need here. So setting it up carefully, making sure it's lined up, I will then draw my four inch long line right there. And I will do the same thing. Let me turn the paper again right here. Line it up, make sure it's straight. And draw another line that's four inches long. Now, if I've done my job, I should just be able to connect these two and they should be four inches apart, which they pretty much are. I mean, it's maybe off by just the tiniest fraction, but I can live with that. I can live with that. There we go. So uh, let me just make a slight adjustment because I think that what happened was that this got moved just a tad when I was drawing that line. All right, now I'm happy with that. Okay, so uh, I have my square, and what I need to do is I need to find the center of this square so that I know where the center of my design is. And the easiest way, the best way, and kind of the only real way to do that is to measure a diagonal from corner to corner and where those lines intersect, that will be my center. So lining the ruler up, here and here, uh, I will be able to draw a diagonal line from one corner to the next. All right, now I wanna start pressing a little bit lighter because uh, I will eventually get rid of these lines. So there's one, set it up to the other corner and that corner, so top, left to bottom right, like that. And it's a good idea to go back and forth and double check and make sure that the ruler is making contact with both of the corners because sometimes it can walk around on you a little bit. There we go. That's the exact center. As they say, X marks the spot and that is the spot. So that's the middle. Um, <clears throat> now, this is the beginning. I have four different triangles that make up this square, and in each of these four different triangles, I'm going to have the same series of guidelines. Um, 
But before I do that, I need to give myself a little bit more space. So I'm going to kind of eyeball a little diamond on the inside of here. And this is gonna help me separate these triangles just a little bit more because what I'm going to do is draw another two lines going this way and another two lines going this way to kind of separate these triangles a little bit and get some space because I need a little bit of room for, for my design at the end phase of it. So I will look at this and you could measure the space between the corners and line it up like that, but I'm going to eyeball it. That's about an eighth of an inch away from the center. And I'm doing the same thing here, roughly. And again, two times going this direction. So, um, this is just in preparation for what's going to happen next. Uh, if you skip this step, it's not the end of the world, but your design won't look as good as it could have looked if you skip this step. So that's why I'm doing it now. Just line that up. Whoops. And there we go. So in order to keep from getting too confused, I'm going to get rid of the lines that are between these triangles so that I just have the triangles because that's really what I need right now. So one square turned into four triangles. And that X should be really apparent now. All right. So, um, let's look at this bottom triangle. In order to set up the design and the guidelines that I want to use, I need to look at it and I kind of need to divide it up. I want to imagine it being cut in half. And I want to put a mark at the bottom of it, right in the middle between these two corners. That's going to help me figure some things out. The first shape or the first series of lines that I want to draw is going to give me kind of a teardrop looking shape. So starting here at the top, uh, I will draw a line that stays with this edge of the triangle until about, you know, here. And then in, in the middle of the path, it's going to come and loop down and touch the very middle of the bottom of the triangle. And then it's gonna curve back up to this point. So this side wants to look the same as the side I just did. And you may need to sketch at this a little bit. That's what I'm doing. I'm just kind of like refining that curvature uh, until I get this side to match this side pretty much, which it's pretty close. Uh, and that, that's good enough for me. I also want to find the middle between the top point and the middle of the bottom line. So right about here is the middle of that space. Now, I, I like to use a little technique uh, where I pinch my fingers together and where they meet, that's the space between them. So that dot is properly located. <clears throat> it's gonna help me find the top of a curve that I'm about to draw. So I will draw a curve from the right-hand point of the triangle all the way across to the left-hand point. And it needs to go through that point that I just drew. Just like that. So I have a teardrop shape and then a gentle curve from corner to corner here. I need two more curves, very, very slight, from the corner to the middle and from the corner to the middle. And they look like this. They're very, they're very soft. They're barely, they're barely anything. They're just off of straight. And they look like this, just a little bit 
okay? So um, I'm going to get rid of some of these straight lines so you can better see what I'm talking about. Man, oh man, I love this thing. It is so fast and it really gets rid of those unwanted lines quickly. Okay, I erased a little bit more than I wanted to to get rid of those lines, but I can put it back. Don't wanna press hard because this stuff is gonna go away too. So what I'm left with is a looping path. It starts in the corner, loops to that corner, loops across to this corner, and loops back around to the beginning. That's what I need. I need that same design. Of course, it's also going to go back across here, so... I need that same design here, here, and here. So I will do a time lapse and show you what that looks like right now. There are the guidelines that we need. You can see that each of them looks pretty much the same as the last. Uh, we have a series of loops, and then once it gets to this point, it loops to the next, loops to the next, and so on and so forth. So this, just like our Celtic Knot border, uh, is one single strand that travels on a path from the beginning to the end. Uh, unbroken. <clears throat> so what we did with the uh, border before is once we had our guidelines complete, we were able to begin to thicken the design. So uh, I add some shapes inside of these spaces and I try to keep the distance between the shape and the line consistent so it doesn't get too close or too far apart uh, from that initial shape. So I will do this one on the bottom in real time, and then I will fast forward the rest. So I've got one, two, three, four shapes on the inside of each of these quarters. And I will also need to add some lines to the outside as well. Here we go. Those are the four shapes that are going inside. And I will need to look at this and add to the outside as well. So I'm just following the contours that I've set up. I don't want to go past the middle between those original triangles that I drew with that X. I'm trying to stay on one side of it because I need enough room for the next one as well. And if I make it too big, I will not have enough space. Coming around the outside. And almost got it. Okay, so that is the bottom one done. Time to do the rest.
So, here are all the outlines. You can still see all of the guidelines inside, but everything is nice and thick now. Um, and the space that we had between those triangles is now closed up. These touch right at the corners, just like I planned, and right in the middle as well. And it kind of looks like a four-leaf clover in the middle there. Um, this is a classic design uh, for a Celtic uh, knot rosette. Um, it's very common. It's one of the easier ones. I like it a lot. Uh, I'm going to need to erase the inside guidelines that I had. Let me do that real quick and we'll get back to you. Now that it's all cleaned out, it's much easier to see the design that we are creating. The last, <clears throat> the last step before it's um, pretty much complete, uh, before you add any embellishment or coloring or shading or anything, is to do the overlaps. Uh, and I like to work one section at a time. So I'm gonna start with the bottom triangle. Uh, once I get that one established, the rest of them are gonna be exactly the same. They will do the same exact thing that it does. So let's get started. Uh, I will start at this intersection right here. So I have one intersection right here and I am going to put this path on top. As it comes down, this is the next intersection. So this strand that went over right here needs to go under right here, and that's going to look like this. So I will connect that line to that line, and this line to this line. So making sure that it flows is important. Uh, I had to make some slight adjustments here and there to get it to, to line up just right. And you will probably need to make some slight adjustments as well. This looks pretty good. I am going to look at that and yeah, make an adjustment there and a slight adjustment there. Little adjustments as you go along are going to be necessary. So it went over here, under here. Nothing happens to it in the corner, but something does happen to it here just went over and under, so it's gotta go over again. And that means connecting this line to this line, and this line to this line. And you see, again, I need to make a slight adjustment in my outline right there. So, one, two, three, and four intersections. So the last one is right here in the middle. And since, well, let's just follow the path. It comes from the top. Here, over, under, corner, over, under, corner, over, under, well, here's a corner, but it's gotta go over. So right here, I will connect this and that. And then I can move on to the next one. So let me turn. Since I already have the one I just did established, it tells me exactly what I need to do for this one, which means that it needs to start out going under right here, and it's going to go over just like the other one did when I started it out. So it's going to be the same exact thing, the over, under, over. So right here it's going under just like it did on the first one. That is not going to change and then here again it's going to go over so like that. Make some slight adjustments to the outline. Gotta clean up as you go otherwise it's gonna get messy. 
All right, so that one's done. Turn it again. Make the same thing. All right, so over, under, and over. That one lined up pretty well. And then of course it, it goes over again. So last one, set that up first. Comes from here, it goes over, then under, and then over again. It couldn't be any easier. However, if you're not keeping track and being methodical about this, you probably will get lost. But all you have to do if you get lost is to trace the path and speak to yourself over, under, over, under, over, under, Anywhere it goes, figure out what it's supposed to do from the start point to the end point. If you do that, you will end up with a good result. So here is the finished design. And again, I can embellish this in many different ways. Um, matter of fact, let me kind of show you what that might look like. So here, I'm going to add a little border To this so very thin spaces along the side and inside here I think what I'll do is I'll just draw a series of circular shapes kind of like a little a little chain of, of circles and I can I can color these or shade them uh, any way I want to this is one type of treatment to give this design a little bit more um, interest. There are lots of different ways you can, you can modify these to make them unique and interesting. Um, you don't have to do circles. You could do diamonds. You could do X's. You could, um, you could make it look like a rope. So maybe, maybe for this section right here, I could just do diagonal lines across like that and kind of curve each end something like that and I could turn it into a rope there's lots of different ways to approach this um, I kind of like the circles so I would keep on doing that um, to finish the design up. Why not a little time lapse to see what that looks like? Celtic knot rosette with uh, a little circular chain treatment on the inside. I can take this even further by shading and coloring it. Um, I think what I will do is I will darken all of the spaces inside so that will give it some contrast. Uh, I'm going to keep it black and white and I might even darken these little spaces around the circles as well. So let's see what that looks like.
<clears throat> if uh, if you try to do this whole thing nonstop, you will make your fingers sore. But there it is, um, shaded with the treatment. Um, this is a pretty much complete black and white design. Um, I could add color, but I'm not going to. Some of you don't have color yet. Um, and so if you don't, this is a great way to finish up a design in black and white. So uh, if you do have color though, I encourage you to use color in your design. Um, it'll really set it, set it off really nicely. Well, here it is. Not gonna lie, this took quite a bit of time and my fingers are sore. Uh, I don't expect you to get this much work done in a very short amount of time. It's gonna take you some time. It's gonna take maybe one or two sessions to get it this far. Um, practice this design. This is the first one you should do. You don't need to do all of the interesting little circles and stuff like that and all the shading for your practice. It just needs to be a simple outline with the correct um, uh, overlaps. But once you get a couple of these under your belt, you'll get really good at it and your final design will be fantastic. So I want you to practice this one and then look at the images that I provided you in Canvas and practice one or two other ones uh, as well. So with that being said, give it a shot. Good luck and I will see you next time. See you later.